Greetings, welcome to week two. And this week we're gonna go over elements of course design starting with module 2.1. It'd be real good if you had the resources course design rubric for online education initiative and quality matters rubric standards out and available while we're going through this video. A good way to think about the elements of course design is it's a scaffold. It's, it's the, the backbone or the framework by which you hang your course on so that the content is delivered in a fashion that's going to optimize your um, success among your students. You know, what, what do you have to do to make it so that all of the pieces are available and accessible so that your students can learn the content that you're trying to get through to them. So the way we measure that is using a couple of rubrics. The, the rubric that we're going to be most interested in is going to be the course design rubric for the online teaching initiative or the OEI. But an ancillary rubric, which is actually quite helpful, is the quality of matters rubric for standards. That's out of the state of Maryland. Um, it's really nicely written and we'll talk some more about that in a minute. We're going to focus primarily in this video on the course design rubric for the online teaching initiative. So rubrics in the secret to grading. I'll let you read that cartoon on your own. Um, but I just want to point out that rubrics are very important. Not only are we going to look at them with respect to evaluating our course design, we should also be thinking about them with respect to how we evaluate our students and how do we evaluate our preparedness or our readiness for teaching an online class. So more about those in future videos. So let's go ahead and talk about the OEI rubric. So it's the rubric that's used for evaluating courses that are going to be offered on the OEI course exchange. And this is a California-based initiative. It has a goal of making coursework more accessible for students in the California Community College system. Since CR is planning on participating in the OAI exchange, it's pretty logical that we ought to be using this set of standards for the courses that we're going to design to use here at College of the Redwoods. Now that said, as I was mentioning, there's another very nice rubric called the QM rubric or the Quality Matters rubric, and that's out of the state of Maryland, and they use that for evaluating their online courses. Now there's a lot of overlap between the OEI and the QM rubrics. The QM rubric is actually though a little bit easier to use since it's a one-way table. It's not gradated. Either you pass the individual standards or you don't. It's broken down with just much more fine detail than the OEI one is. It gives you a nice laundry list of items that need to be considered when designing an online course. So I encourage you to read it over and use that or have that out when you are designing an online course just as you should have the OEI rubric. And we're going to ask you some questions about it on the quiz that goes with this module, so you should read it. <laughs> or at least have it out in front of you while you're taking the quiz. Okay, so let's go back to the OEI rubric. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and illustrate the OEI rubric and thereby illustrate um, course design by evaluating the OTLT using the OEI rubric. Um, so one thing though to keep in mind when you're doing this evaluation is that these rubrics are designed to be used part of an iterative process in that you design a course that um, obviously you've had these rubrics out front so you know the elements that you're trying to, to put forth there. Then you send the course to a peer evaluator that's versed in, in the language of these rubrics. They evaluate it, they give you the feedback, you uh, make revisions as necessary, send it back to review, etc. It's, it's supposed to be a continuous quality improvement sort of situation, not just a static one and done sort of thing. All right, so let's talk about the OEI um, rubric in general. In fact, actually, before I go forward here, let me show you both of the rubrics so you can take a look at those and you see what I'm, what I'm talking about. So first, let's take a look at the Quality Matters rubric. So the Quality Matters rubric has eight standards by which you need to address. And each of those standards are broken down. They have somewhere between five and nine subsections within each one of them. And points are awarded for each of those subsections as those subcategories within the standard. And again, as I said, it's like a laundry list. This is a really nice thing to have out there in front of you. You know, um, introductions make clear how to get started and where the various course components are, et cetera. And you'll see as we start talking about uh, the OEI rubric, a lot of that sort of stuff appears in there also, as, as it should be. There's a lot of commonality because these are just um, good, good standards by which to build an online course. So what does what the OEI rubric look like? What does that particular rubric entail? Well, the OEI rubric, the best place to find that is online. And of course, hopefully you've gone in and opened up both of these uh, documents, these resources, and had them available while you're watching the video. If not, I invite you to pause the video right now and go ahead and do that. Um, the, the Online Education Initiative web, website has lots of information on it. And one of the things is, is this rubric. So. When you come in, you notice that the OEI rubric has only four categories. 
or four standards. It's course design, interaction and collaboration, assessment and learner support. And as with the QM rubric, it's broken up into subcategories or, or, or standards within, substandards within each of those standards. Uh, I'm not going to read this to you on <laughs> while you're watching the video here because I know you guys can do that on your own. Definitely I encourage you to read through it. But one thing I will point out is that each of the standards gets graded. Um, distinguished exemplary, you get a 5 to a 6, satisfactory to accomplish is a 3 to 4, promising a 2, incomplete is a 1, and you didn't even address it, you get a 0, okay? So um, they're also down here, if you're planning on submitting a course to the OEI to be included in the exchange, it gives you the uh, awarded points necessary in order to be able to be considered to be part of the exchange. So let's scroll back up here and let's click on the first of the four standards course design. And what we notice is we get the actual rubric for that particular standard. And so the first subcategory within that standard is objectives. And we see that one of the things that we're supposed to do in order to be distinguished or exemplary is that our objectives are supposed to be made available in a variety of areas in the course, within the syllabus, within each learning unit or module. Objectives are clearly written at the appropriate level and reflect desired outcomes. Objectives are written in measurable outcomes. Students know what they are expected to be able to do. Okay, so let's go take a look at the OTLT course to date, what we've we've gone through so far, and see how we rate with, with respect to that standard. So we come in and we have an introduction page. So do our students know what to do? Yes, well, there's an introduction here. It tells us each week begins with lessons. Um, and that we should start off with the OTLT start here button so that we make sure we know how to actually navigate it. Um, you've actually read this, I'm sure, because we're into week two already. So I won't reread that to you, but I'll come down and go ahead and take the start here button and see if we can actually use our rubric to evaluate this. So a little bit of history of the course. And then, oh, there we go, we've got the course learning outcomes. Since we are a California school, course learning outcomes are rather important to us. So we have our six outcomes of things that you are supposed to be able to do when you exit this course that you may not necessarily known when you started the course. Then there is a link to the syllabus, which is good. That's, that's uh, another thing in the rubric that it asks us to do. So it's looking, what are the outcomes or the objectives are made available in a variety of areas of the course. And the objectives are written in measurable outcomes. So these are our measurable student learning outcomes. And then here is some um, ideas about how you actually are supposed to get through each of the modules, which is, is really good. So if I was to be the rater on this, and you know, if I was to actually be honest about evaluating it, I would give it a five because you know one of the things among the objectives that they listed here, let's go back to the OTLT objectives here is that one of the things is that the objectives um, are within the syllable and each of the individual learning units or modules. So our course learning outcomes are not reiterated in each of the modules, although, although I should say is that if we go into any one of the particular modules, so for example, if we go into uh, module 1.1, what we're going to see is, let's get there, there we go, is that we have useful resources, uh, we have a video, and then we say what the video is embedded. But notice that the course learning outcomes aren't showing up in here. So that's something I'm taking to heart. I'm going to have to come in and actually update this and, and have it uh, put in there. So uh, we do have, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. And then actually in further modules, it gets a little bit better. But, um, you know, there's some places, there's some room for improvement. Okay, so with respect to objectives, we've done okay, not bad. We're somewhere between a four and a five in there, okay? What about content presentation? Again, uh, because I had to shrink this up to make it fit, let me just make it a little smaller, maybe even might help a little bit here. Um, since I had to shrink this up a little bit to make it fit in the window, you really should have this open on your own to uh, read these because it's going to be awfully difficult to see them by reading the screen here, okay? So content is made available in or chunked into manageable sections presented in distinct learning units or modules. Check, we've got ours, our whole course modularized, even submodules. Navigation is intuitive and content flows in a logical presentation. Again, check, we've got that. We're using the next and previous buttons to help you flow through. We've got lots, if we go back to the page here, go back to our home page, we've got lots of ways for you to access your modules and to access the flow. You can um, go in and click on the week one module or you can look, click on week two modules 
and you can see the start of week two and then work your way through by just clicking the next or you know if you're more of a uh, I want to see it all thank you very much you can click on the modules button over here on the side and you can see the actual structure of each of the modules so we've got it we're doing pretty good with that respect CS, CMS tools are used to reduce the labor intensity of learning, providing links and needed resources where they will be used in the course, integrating published resources so they're tailored to the course materials, and providing streamlined access to supplementary materials. And again, um, we're doing pretty well there. If you take a look at every one of the starting the modules, this, the material necessary to get through the module, all the resources and everything are on the opening page to get you started in the module. So we're doing quite well with that particular um, standard. So A2, looking good, definitely give that a five. Of course, I think there's always some room for improvement on there, okay? Uh, clearly labeled tutorial materials and explain how to navigate the CMS and specific courses are included is one of the things that I would like to do. I'd like to uh, create a video at the beginning of the course that just takes you through and shows you how to do the navigation and actually physically flies you around in the course, so to speak. I think that would be a useful thing. So that's kind of why I'm thinking a five there. Let's look at part three, learner engagement. So in this category, I think we could use some improvement here. Um, this is some things that we've kind of been struggling with in the design of this course. So let's go through it. I'm, I'm going over into the second column because I think that's the column we belong in. So I think instructional strategies are designed to help students to reach course objectives, although this relationship may not be obvious to the learners. Uh, I think it's somewhat obvious to you guys. I'm hoping it is, but I think we get some room for improvement there. Guidance is provided, but could be improved with greater detail or depth. Individual learning opportunities such as remediation may be available on a limited basis. Uh, we don't have too much in the way of remediation here. It's either you get it or you don't for the most part, although you do get to take the quiz multiple times. So I guess in some ways that does count. Tools available within the CMS could be utilized more or more creatively to engage learners in the course content. Technologies within the course are used in many cases merely to replicate traditional face-to-face -face instructions. Uh, learner Learners have the opportunity to give anonymous feedback to the instructor regarding course design and or course content, but not but only after course completion, okay? So we don't have a way of you giving anonymous feedback to us at this point. Uh, the technologies, uh, in particular, the technology that we're using in our CMS here is Canvas itself. And there's a nice uh, set of tools that we're going to take you, excuse me, a set of uh, modules we're going to take you through to teach you some of the ins and outs of Canvas, but they're not directly in our shell. We kind of have to go out to a different Canvas shell to make that work. So I think all in all in the learner engagement in terms of the ease of use of the site, I would give us a three to maybe a four in terms of maybe needing some improvement in there, okay? All right, so that takes care of course design. Now we're going to go to interaction and collaboration, which is the next part of the OEI rubric. Okay, so this is part B. First part of standard B is communication strategies. Okay, so again, I think our best fit here is in column two. So let's go take a look at the structure of column two here. And it says contact information for instructors is included and contact information includes more than one type of communication tool. So that is true at the end of every one of these slides. And in many places, you will find not only my email and phone number, but also Reno's and Kathy's to help uh, get a hold of any of us that are in the DE sphere of things to help you get help or other things that you might need. Expected response time for email replies is included. Within 24 hours, we will get back to you. Instructor's role within the course is clearly spelled out to the students. Uh, I'm not sure if that's too well spelled out to you, but Reno and I, uh, we know what we're doing. <laughs> Hopefully you guys do too. Instructor's methods for collecting and turning work are clearly explained. And several communications are included and reinforce the desired learning outcomes. You will get a, an announcement, a weekly announcement to tell you what's going on with that particular week's modules. Communication sometimes require reflection and other higher order thinking. Okay, that's our discussions, which is really good. That's the idea of getting you guys to talk to each other. Interactions are meaningful, but may not take full advantage of the real-time presence of instruction and or peers. We will actually do that in one of our modules here. We'll show you how to use in an optional session the conferencing tool that's built into um, into Canvas to let you talk to your students in real time. So I think I would go with a four there. I think we're doing pretty good, but there is definitely 
room for improvement. Development of learning communities. So let's scroll down to development of learning community. And let's see what we would look at there. Okay, so in the development of uh, learning community, I think we're doing pretty well there. The instructors have a plan for initiating contact prior to or the beginning of the class and or regular intervals during the course duration. So uh, you got an invitation from us to get in and lots of information about the OTLT several weeks before the course got going. Invitation to participate. Communication activities are designed to help build a sense of community among learners. I think that one of the strongest suits of this course is definitely the discussions that happen among your peers. So I would definitely rate us highly there. Student-to-student -student interaction are required as part of the course. Students are encouraged to initiate communication with the instructor. Uh, we're really good on student-to-student -student interactions. I don't know how well we're doing with encouraging you to communicate with the instructor directly, other than there is a place for you to ask questions of the instructor weekly, and, but it's not mandatory. It's up to you whether or not you do that. But I think we're doing a pretty good job there. Collaborative activities, if included, reinforce course content and learning outcomes while building workplace useful skills, such as teamwork, cooperation, negotiations, and consensus building. So we don't really have any... Um, collaborative activities other than you will see that we're going to ask you to write a syllabus for a course that you're thinking about teaching and you will get a peer review there. So it's collaborative in the sense that you're going to be helping each other out improving your course syllabi that you're going to be writing. Interaction logistics guidelines explaining levels of participation, the quantity of interactions are provided and that of course I think again we're doing pretty good with our discussion boards like I said it's one of the strong suits of this course expectations regarding the quality of communication what constitutes a good answer are clearly defined so we give a rubric at every one of our discussions to help you figure that out and write down into the next one a rubric or equivalent grading document is included to explain how to participate uh, will be uh, the participation will be evaluated that is provided in every one of our discussions in fact we would like it very much if you use that rubric when you're you know, grading yourself so to speak instructors plan to participate actively in communication activities including providing feedback to students we will participate in this in the comments Reno and I uh, will do that judiciously um, we'll talk more about that as we get further in the courses to our our philosophy on that Instructor plans to use communication tools effectively to provide course updates, reminders, special announcements, etc. The announcement tool in uh, Canvas is quite excellent for that. It's just a really good job of letting you know on a weekly basis. There is also an email tool of sorts that works pretty well, but the announcement tool should be your primary tool that you're using when you're communicating with your students. Okay, so that takes care of part B. Let's go take a look at assessment. Let's go talk real quick about that part of the rubric. And one of the things you're gonna see is that as we go through the course, is that we actually have modules in pretty much every one of these standards that we're going through in the rubric here. There will be a module on assessment and talking about the different types of assessments, summative versus formative. But that said, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we know so far about OTLT and how it fits within um, the rubric for the OEI here. So uh, let's take a look at the first part of the standard, which is expectations. Assessment matches the objectives. Learners are directed to the appropriate objectives for each assessment. Rubrics or descriptive criteria for desired outcomes are provided. Models of good work may be shown, for example. Instructions are written clearly with sufficient detail to ensure understanding. So uh, let's take a look at each of those individually here. So the our assessments do match the objectives. I'm pretty comfortable with saying that yes, that is true. Learners are directed to the appropriate objectives for each assessment. I think we could use a little improvement there. I think uh, it's telling you where to go back once you've missed a question and what you should be looking at would be helpful. Rubrics for uh, or descriptive criteria for desired outcomes are provided. Yes, we do have that in each of those. Models of good work. For example, uh, you're going to be asked to write a syllabus. We have an example syllabus, the syllabus for this course, that can be used to help you with that. Instructions are written clearly with sufficient detail to ensure understanding, and I, I believe we're good there too. So uh, I think I would give us a five on that particular one. Uh, just again, I think there's some room for improvement in, um, in sending you back to the objectives once you've maybe missed a question. Assessment design. Now this this is kind of a biggie. Uh, it's, it's, that in many ways is discipline specific in your assessment design, but there are commonalities among all disciplines. So assessment activities have face value or face validity. That means they match the curriculum and are explained using appropriate leading level and vocabulary. In other words, your, your um, assessments are 
assessing what you want to assess or what the students believe they're supposed to be learning in the course. Higher order thinking is required, analysis, problem solving, etc. In our case, it's analysis because we've got you working together. Part of your assessment is your actual uh, writing assignments, your discussions. Assessments, assignments, or assessments are designed to mimic authentic environments to facilitate transfer. That's a toughie. Uh, you know, we're hoping that our assessments mimic what goes on out there in the real world when you are actually delivering an online course. But this is kind of a unique course with that respect. And so uh, I, I think we, we're doing our best. We can do it that standard, but it doesn't fit so well here in terms of how we're assessing you. But th that said, we do. We assess you and in, in things that you need to know, particularly like when we talk about um, accessibility and other things. Those are real important topics that are going to transfer back to when you're creating your course. Assessment activities occur frequently throughout the duration of the course. Again, if we take a look at our course, I'd say yes, they do. Every module, you're going to have at least a quiz. And uh, the meaningful feedback is going to be given to you in terms of the discussion um, areas when we talk about things there. There's um, not much in the way meaningful feedback on the multiple choice quizzes. We could do some improvement there. There are ways of giving feedback and multiple choice when a student finishes the quiz so they can see, you know, the correct answer and some explanation of why they got uh, the wrong answer. Multiple types of assessment are used, research, project, objectives, tests, discussions, etc. Uh, we're probably a little weak in that area in that we are using um, quizzes and we are using uh, discussion boards. And that's pretty much besides the syllabus, those which you could, I guess, in a sense, call that a research project. You know, I, I'd like to see us have more assessments that were in the written format. But, you know, we're doing pretty good. I think for what we're trying to tackle and the amount of time we had to do it in, I think the assessments are appropriate and at the right level. Opportunities for student self-assessment are plentiful and provide feedback and allow students to seek additional help when necessary. So yes, uh, the self-assessment in our sense is that you get to take the quizzes over and over <laughs> until you finally get them right. Okay, so there is definitely still some room for improvement in our assessment design. I would go somewhere between a four and a five there. I think some of it we're doing really well. Some of it could definitely use some work. Okay, last part of the um, rubric that we need to talk about here is learner support. Now, uh, learner support in many ways is discussing accessibility issues. And, and not only that, but also for uh, students who are not necessarily in need of 508 or 504 considerations. And we're going to talk about that extensively in a, a, a section coming up on um, accessibility. So I'm going to leave that part of the rubric for you to read through. And as, as an assignment, I would like you to think about this part of the rubric as you're going through the OTLT. See if you think, at least what we've done to date, do we meet these standards? In other words, I'll let you try that on your own. So read through these and go back and take a look at um, the first module in in the OTLT and see where do you think we would fall in the rubric based upon these standards. In other words, take it for a test drive. Take the rubric out and see if you can actually make it work for you. Okay, so I think that is a good place to go ahead and wrap up this video because we're getting a little long in the tooth here. It's a lot of information. So let's go ahead and uh, remind you one more time who we're, you're working with. You're working with Kathy Cox, Michael Butler, and Rio Genovetti, who is our instructional technologist, and Kathy Cox, who is our director of distance education. If you need any of us, there are emails and phone numbers. Don't be shy about contacting us. And you can, of course, you can use the the contact tool within Canvas to contact us also.